The following is an overview of wound management utilizing Euromed's advanced skincare technology wound products. There is an old saying that states, what goes around comes around, and in many regards this could well apply to wound care. Some of our greatest advances may well depend on how well we observe and learn from our past mistakes. We have used a variety of substances in our efforts to aid and speed the healing process. Everything from tea to wine, to herbs and meat, to honey and sugar, all have been used to cleanse, cover, and dress the wound. The ancient Egyptians studied the effects of their healing interventions and recorded their findings as far back as 2000 BC. They often used meat in order to prime the wound surface and honey and oil combinations to cover the open wound areas. This practice, they noted, often resulted in favorable wound healing outcomes. We could learn much from these early clinical findings, yet even today, 4,000 years later, we're still struggling with the concept of moist versus dry wound healing. But in order to understand these different concepts, we need to understand how wounds heal. The skin, our largest body organ, is composed of three layers. The epidermis, the topmost layer of the skin, is very thin and itself consists of four layers. The stratum corneum is the top layer and is constantly eroding and regenerating helping to protect us from invasion by harmful organisms. Damage to this layer usually consists of minor skin erosions and or blister formation. The dermis contains blood vessels, nerves, sweat glands, and hair follicles. Partial thickness wounds to the upper portion of the dermis bleed and can be painful, and wounds extended further into the dermis can take longer to heal. The subcutaneous tissue contains connective tissue and fat. Damage to this level is referred to as a full thickness wound. Wounds extending down to muscle and bone are also full thickness wounds. And these wounds take a longer time to heal since they require granulation tissue formation and dermal repair. The wound healing cascade is quite involved. Once wounded, the body responds initially by shutting down blood flow in order to limit blood loss. Then, the vascular system brings polymorphonuclear leukocytes to the wound area to begin the process of removing bacteria and debris from the wound site. By day two, macrophages arrive and begin the dermal repair process. Fibroblasts begin to build collagen and endothelial cells lay the groundwork for new blood vessel formation. By day three, keratinocytes swing into action and start the resurfacing process, moving from the wound edge and from the lining of hair follicles. Somewhere around day five, the maturation phase begins and the ongoing collagen remodeling process for scar reduction swings into action.